Namaskar. In earlier sessions, we learned that potential is another way of describing electric field. So if I know the potential at every point in space, I can find the electric field. And if I know the electric field everywhere in space, I can fix up a point and find the potential or potential difference at other points in that space. In laboratories, it is easier to measure potential difference than measuring electric field. You must have seen batteries, cells, which produce potential difference. We call this potential difference as voltage. Now, let us do an experiment to measure potential difference. So, let's start. In this experiment, we have taken a paper on which a point is taken and concentric circles are drawn around that point. The first circle has radius 1 cm, the second circle has radius 2 cm, third circle has radius 3 cm and the fourth circle has radius 4 cm. We have taken a petri dish and kept on that such a way that the central point of the petri dish coincides with the center point on the paper right of those concentric circles. There is an aluminium ring and kept at the periphery right water is put in the dish. There is a battery a cell of 9 volts. The negative terminal of this cell is connected to the aluminium ring which is taken kept at the periphery of the dish. The positive terminal of the cell is kept at the central point. So there is a potential difference between these two points, the central point and the edge periphery, the aluminium ring, right? There is a multimeter used to measure the potential difference and it is kept the range taken is 20 volts. The negative terminal of this multimeter is connected to the aluminium ring. The cell is connected to the aluminium ring and it is at lower potential and the whole ring therefore is at the same potential and also the negative terminal of the multimeter is at lower potential and the central point is at higher potential. All right. The positive terminal of the multimeter will be used now to find the potential at different points. So we can find the potential at different points on different circles. Okay. Also, we'll find whether the potential is same on different points on the same circle. All right, okay. So, first point on the circle is around 7.05, right? The radius of the circle is 1 centimeter. On the same circle, at some other point, it is 6.91, something around. It is shaking because uh, it, the pointer is not steady. The terminal is not kept steady. It is slipping over the glass dish, right? Now, at the third point, we get something around 7.53 or 54, right? On the next circle, we get something around 4.21. Another point, 4.23, right? Another point on the same circle is something around 4.51, right? The third circle, it is 2.69. Something next point is 2.78 on the same circle. The third point is something around 3.27, right? And the fourth point we'll see, it is something around 3.34, right? Now, in the fourth circle, it is something around 1.84, right? Something around 
yes and the next point something around 1.79 third point 2.01 and fourth point we are getting 1.89 right at the periphery we see when we touch the aluminium ring it is zero volts right another point zero at the periphery wherever we touch the aluminium ring it is zero volts right so what we saw in this experiment was that the potential noted down at different points on the same circle was almost same now you must have seen it was shaking it was changing that was because you know that the terminal was not very steady secondly also the central point center terminal of the battery and the periphery the aluminium ring they are not at the same distance everywhere the distance was, is changed somewhere the aluminium ring is nearer somewhere it is little further so there is that difference is there it's not perfect right that's why we saw that there was slight difference coming on the same circle right the potential was a uh, little different on the same circle and not exactly the same so more or less the value was same right also we saw that when we touch the positive terminal of this multimeter to the aluminium ring the potential seen there voltage seen on the multimeter was zero because obviously both the probes were at the same potential right so there was no potential difference and hence we got it zero okay fine so as we go away from the positive terminal we saw that the potential was decreasing right from uh, the central point at 1 cm then at 2 cm as the distance went on increasing the potential decreased now if you see the values okay we'll see the values and then we see the re there is a relation as uh, the distance from that positive terminal is or higher potential is increasing the potential is decreasing and there is a relation what the way does it decrease does it decrease uh, with a factor of 1 upon r or with 1 upon r square we'll see that okay so what we saw in this experiment was we took an aluminium ring which was kept at a lower potential and we considered that to be as zero potential. V is we considered as zero at this periphery. Then the central point was kept at higher potential. Then at a distance say r from the higher potential we tried to measure the potential and what we found was on that circle at different points in all directions we saw that the potential was almost the same of course we found the difference and we have already discussed the higher potential was not exactly at the center at the same time this aluminium ring was not exactly circular hence the distance between higher potential and lower potential was not exactly the same in all directions that's why we got some difference so what did we measure r in centimeters and v in volts we found that when r was 1 centimeter v was around 7 volts when it r was 2 centimeters v was four, around 4 volts at 3 centimeters it was around 3 volts and at 4 centimeters it was around 1.8 volts so you see that as r goes on increasing v goes on decreasing so what is the dependence of v on r by a factor 1 upon r so v is proportional to 1 upon r okay i'm sure you must have enjoyed this experiment at the same time you must have understood the concept of potential difference very well right also you must have understood as you go along the direction of electric field 
potential decreases, right? And the dependence is 1 upon r, correct? Now, let us find out potential energy of a system of charge. So, consider a system of two charges, say Q1 and Q2 with position vectors R1 and R2 with respect to some origin, right? Now, in a space, before we obtain this system of two charges, we had to bring the charge, say Q1, from infinity to a point in space. So, while bring, before bringing that charge, there was no, there is no field in the space, right? So, therefore, there is no external field against which work needs to be done to bring the charge Q1 from infinity to that point. Now, this charge, once you bring it and place it in space at some point, right, this charge will produce a potential in that space, right? Let us take a point, say, P. So, we can find what is the potential at some point P due to this charge Q1 and it is given by V1 equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 upon R1P, where R1P is the distance of some point P in space from location Q1. All right? Now let us consider a point at some position vector R2, right, from some or that same origin. Let V1 at R2 be the potential at that point due to charge Q1. Hence, work done in bringing that charge Q2 from infinity to that point is the charge, this charge multiplied by the potential at that point. So, what is it? Q2 into V1 at R2, right? Equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 Q2 upon R12, where R12 is the distance between the two charges, correct? Distance between the charge Q1 and charge Q2. This work done gets stored in the system as the potential energy. Correct? So, therefore, the potential energy of a system of two charges is given by 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 Q2 upon R12. That is denoted by capital U. Alright. So, if the charges are like charges, then the work done is positive and thus the potential energy of the system is positive. But if the charges are unlike charges, then the work done is negative. What does that mean? It means that positive amount of work is needed to be done against the electrostatic attractive force to take the charges from given location to infinity. That means negative amount of work is needed for the reverse path. That means to bring the charge from infinity to that location. Hence, the potential energy of the system in this case is negative. Alright? In general, if Q1 is brought, it produces a potential in space at a point P, which is given by 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0, Q1 upon R1P. As you know, R1P is the distance between the point P from charge Q1. Now, work done in bringing another charge Q2 from infinity to a point with position vector, say R2, is given by Q2 multiplied by the potential at that point, which is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 Q2 upon R12. 
where R12 is the distance of charge Q2 from charge Q1. All right. The charges Q1 and Q2 produce a potential in space at any point P, which is given by 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 upon R1P plus Q2 upon R2P. Right? And we denote it by V12. Potential at point P due to charge Q1 and Q2. Okay? Now, if we want to bring a charge, another charge, say Q3, from infinity to another position, say at a position vector R3 from the same origin, right? Then we have to do work against this electrostatic force due to Q1 as well as Q2, right? So, work done in bringing Q3 from infinity to a point with position vector R3 is given by Q3 multiplied by the potential at that point due to charge Q1 and Q2. So what it will be? 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 Q3 upon R13 plus Q2 Q3 upon R23 where R13 is the distance of charge Q3 from Q1. And R23 is the distance of charge Q3 from charge Q2. Alright, so the total work done in getting the charges at needed location is obtained by adding the work done for each charge. So that is, say, let us represent the potential, total potential energy of the system by U then u will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0, which is the common factor in all the work done, right? Into the bracket q1, q2 upon r12 plus q1, q3 upon r13 plus q2, q3 upon r23, where r12 is the distance of charge q1 from charge q2. R13 is the distance of charge Q1 from charge Q3 and R23 is the distance of charge Q2 from charge Q3. So, we have got say in the beginning we got charge say Q1, okay. Then we got some charge Q2 and then we got some charge say Q3, right. So, this distance is R12. This distance is distance R13. And this distance is distance R23. Okay. Now, when we obtain this charge configuration, right, when we obtain this charge configuration, we brought charge Q1 first, then we brought charge Q2 and then we got charge Q3. And what is the potential energy of this system of charges? This, correct? Now, if I had brought charge Q2 first, then say charge Q3 and then charge Q1, then also we would have got the same potential energy of this system, right? If I had brought Q2 first, then Q1 and then Q3, then also we would have got the same potential energy of the system, right? That means this equation is independent of the manner in which the configuration is assembled. The potential energy is characteristic of the present state of configuration and not the way the state is achieved. This is extremely important point which we have to understand. Alright? That's all in this session.
See you next time.